Welcome back to The Late Show. Once again, we are live tonight following the Democratic debate from Iowa. My first guest is a billionaire media mogul who served three terms as mayor of New York City and is now running to become the Democratic nominee for president. Please welcome Mayor Michael Bloomberg. Please have a seat. There you, you are. You. Welcome, welcome to the show. Thank you. It's my second time. I know. Nice to see you again. Nice to see you again. Well, I didn't do that bad a job the first time because you didn't invite me back. Right. Well, I mean, you're, you're, you're a hot item tonight because all the other candidates are in Iowa right now. And, 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 and you decided no, not... No, one, one of the other candidates is in Wisconsin. Oh, oh, that's it. Trump. Uh, Trump in Wisconsin. Yeah, yeah. 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 I didn't send him there. No, I know. Uh, you, congratulations. You're fifth nationally in the latest polls. So it is, it is possible... <laughs> only, only number one actually gets the nomination, but it's possible. You're, you're, you, got, you got a shot at this. Sometimes. Should we worry that we might lose our big gulps if you become president of the United no. States? Would no, you, but you, can I have this one? No, sure, sure. No. Mm. Oh, so refreshing. I like it. Well, now, you're not in Iowa. You're not campaigning in Iowa or New Hampshire or South Carolina or Nevada, which are the first contests. No, but I have been in 20 states and 40 cities in oh. the last month. Well, I, 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 I grant you that. I'm not trying to take away anything you're doing. Why this unconventional approach? Well, I started late. It was too late to get into the first four and I wasn't invited into the debates because I don't take any money from anybody. Oh, okay. So that's part one of the criteria. You have to poll at a certain level and get a certain number. And you have of... to have 225,000 donors. Okay. And I have only one. All right. Me. <laughs> yes. And he's quite passionate. He's quite passionate. Look, I'm spending my money to get rid of Donald Trump. Somebody complained, and I said, "You want me to spend more or less?" They said, "Spend more." Of course, it was my money they were spending. Well, uh, you're not there on the debate stage, but you are here in, in our, on our stage, and everybody knows the road to the White House goes past this desk. And so... <laughs> well, I had the choice of spending the night with you or with Wolf Blitzer. Good choice. Thank you. <laughs> so uh, I, I think of the campaign as something like a job interview, so let, let's get straight to it. How did you hear about the opening? <laughs> what opening? For President of the United States. There might ah. be an opening coming up. Um, I thought I'd check my calendar, and it said, uh, Donald Trump is there, and you don't want him to stay there, and his term ends at this date. So I said, okay, let's go after him. Mm -hmm. And you had, you had the next four years free? I had the next four years free. I had, actually had the next eight years free. Mm -hmm. um, I want to make sure the job matches with your expectation. What was your previous salary? One dollar. A dollar really? a year, and I have all 12 checks framed. Oh, wow. Because I didn't want to cash them. Mm. But I'll go back later on when I need the money. And, uh, <laughs> can you drive stick? Uh, first car I ever had was a stick, yes. Okay. But it was a long time ago. Sure. Not doing a lot of driving these days? Not a lot of driving, okay. but, uh... You fly a helicopter, right? I do. What, why do you fly a helicopter? Uh, because it's fun. And because I want to get from here to there. Do you really just go around traffic in a helicopter? Uh, I don't fly over traffic. I sort of go out over the water, or, you know, on some other places. I'm not saying that you're buzzing 995 no. in a Sikorsky. No. But you but, get to work in a helicopter. Uh, no. You don't? Uh, you really for should. For a lot of years, I got to work terrible. in a subway. Oh, really? Yes. You still take the subway? Uh, I still do when I go downtown, sure. Mm -hmm. What do you think of the subway these days under the, your, the mayor who followed you? Uh, I made a commitment I would not talk about my predecessor or my successor. And actually, the subway isn't run by the mayor. It's really one, run by some commission, and the governor probably has more say. It needs a lot of work is a nice way to phrase it. Well, you, In other you words, did... it stinks. <laughs> That's nice. So... You missed out on a chance in answering some of the big questions tonight. 
such as the first one, and this is, a, this is an important one. Why are you best prepared to be commander-in-chief? Because I have experience in running the largest city in America, which is very international, has an enormous police department, equivalent to a small army, mm -hmm. uh, and nobody goes into the office with the experience of running four million em employees, which is what the president has. But it's not a job for... It's not an entry-level job, and it's not a job if you need training wheels, and I don't need the training wheels. Um, yeah. What is... There was a lot of discussion tonight about uh, uh, America's um, war in Iraq that started in 2003 and the recent military exchange with Iran. What is the, what is the bar for military intervention or military action for a President Bloomberg? Well, the first thing is it has to really threaten America. And number two, if the rest of the world is being threatened, we have an obligation to go and help. We are the superpower of the world, and if you, with superpower status comes a responsibility. And I think you saw that in World War I and World War II. The wars were elsewhere, except in the Pacific when we did get attacked, but we went to defend the free world, and that's something that the superpower has to do. Because in the end, it'll come back to us too, so this is not just being altruistic. Um, you have um, been a Democrat and a Republican. I'm an expert on partisan politics. I've been everything. Okay. <laughs> a lot of my moderate Republican friends say you're the Democrat they could vote for. Is that because you're part Republican? Um, I did run as a Republican because yeah. I couldn't get on the ballot as a Democrat. But I think, all kidding aside, what people want to know is that you're, they're going to get good government. And when I was mayor, I raised taxes on the wealthy, but we spent the money wisely, and the crime went down, and deaths went down, and uh, streets were cleaner. And people don't mind paying taxes if they see they get something for it. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about Elizabeth Warren's uh, wealth tax? Because uh, you, 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 you have a little it, bit it of cash not, in the bank, I and have a I assume cash. that you'd be hit pretty hard by her billionaire tax, you being, you know, billionaire. And I'll have to go... <laughs> I'll have to go and check my account and see if it's still there. Mm -hmm. But, you know, so all kidding aside, uh, the wealth tax just doesn't work. It's been tried elsewhere. We have to raise taxes on the wealthy. That's the way you fix income inequality, and that's where we get money to do the things that we need to do that keeps this country safe and keep the economy going. But uh, you don't just go and do it for the heck of it because you want to be mean. You do it because you need the money and you can tell, and you're going to spend it wisely. You've put your money where your mouth is if were some very high-profile and important issues. One is uh, gun control. Yep. Um, and climate change. Well, why did you, why did you choose was, these It's two? in gun control. We want to have background checks so that the wrong people don't get guns. You don't want to sell guns to minors. <laughs> we... We have the Second Amendment. We're not going to change the Constitution. You have a right to bear arms. But the courts let you say no guns to minors, no guns to people with psychiatric problems, and no guns to people with criminal records. And, and what, have you, what have you done uh, in terms of fighting climate change? I know that's been an important issue for you. Uh, climate change, well, the first thing we've done is we've closed 302 out of the 530 coal-fired power plants in the country. And that reduces the greenhouse gases dramatically. <laughs> mm -hmm. And has that been something you've been behind, trying to encourage people to close these plants? The well, Sierra Club has done a lot of the work, but, but my foundation basically funded it, yes. How much money have you spent so far running for president? Um, we have to report in a while, but it would be a couple uh, hundred million dollars. A couple hundred million dollars. Yep. Um, you, but uh, that's you... my investment in trying to get rid of Donald Trump and get us a decent president. <laughs> Regardless of whether you're the next guy. Couldn't hear I think regardless of whether you're the next president, you are committed to helping whoever is nominated? Normally they ask, will you, if you're not the candidate, agree to support whoever does get the nomination? And in this case, that's a very easy thing to do because every single person on the stage today is better than Donald Trump. Well, we have to take a little bit of a break. I hope you can stay because it's a live show. We'll be right back with more Mayor Michael Bloomberg, everybody. Stick around.